You're welcome back. This is News File. It's your most authoritative news analysis show. And um, uh, sorry, but there's not much time. I'm unable to read your messages. But Kuku, the very last <coughs> portion of what you read, it, it may appear that the minister may not have been candid to parliament. When they ask, is it part of the budget? No. And she says no. No, it don't because we have read follow, the, no, no, we have read the budget. No, 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 don't, don't go too far. Follow and parliamentary. And at page four one nine, when when I saw that, it was curious. Page four one nine no. of no. the no, no, budget no. statement. You don't get the trend. There's See. a provision in there for this. Did Norway. you hear the speaker ask the question again? Okay. So that is how parliament works. Did okay. you hear the speaker if ask I that question my again? Own ministry as an example. Okay. No. See. Okay. See. Listen. Listen mm. carefully. All right. This is the, min the speaker yeah. for clarity. You just ask it again. Otherwise, it will Me, uh, it no, will say, say. it will appear the minister rather misled where, parliament. No. 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 Yeah. No. That's why the speaker asked the question again. Okay. So and that's why it. the records. It's Re verbatim. Ask parliamentary. It yeah. Mm. Mm. The speaker asked, honorable, honorable Minister, is the purchase of the building in Oslo part of the budget statement? They were not debating the budget statement. Yes. They have finished that debate. And she said no. She said, no, Mr. Speaker, it is not part of the 2019 budget statement. Uh -huh. Then Mr. Speaker, wanting clarity, said, it is not part of the budget statement which we are debating here. That was the annual estimates. The so thing. so the first statement is not part of the 2019 budget statement. Yes. It's wrong. It's wrong. But I'm saying that because the speaker... at page 419... You are not getting... Is there. Look, that's what parliament is like. If, oh, if you know how... Okay, so... Why do so, you think the speaker... So you said that was a slip on the part of the minister? The speaker knew, the speaker knew that was a slip. Mm. And so ask this question again. That's Listen okay. carefully. What the speaker say? It is not part of the budget statement which we are debating here. Don't forget, 2019 budget statement has been debated already. Right. The speaker says, we are debating here. Let me imagine then, no, imagine let me the speaker had not followed that. No, so, but that's what parliament we is about. We will be left with this information exactly. that it is not but in the budget statement. Is speaker, it is no, oh, it is you, are, you, are, you are just splitting heads. If you know how parliament works, that's why the speaker, on top of the business he's doing, asks the second question. It is not part of the budget statement we are, are debating here. We are in the present. Mm. We yes, are it's... debating here. Then the minister now gets the point and says, no, Mr. Speaker, no, it is not. So the speaker then is went back. Is it permissible, is it pardonable that the mm -hmm. sector minister oh, says I've... no to um, a question which, which calls for a yes answer? Once this record, this verbatim record, it and it takes the speaker to assist her. It doesn't no, matter. I've, I've, I've seen ten thousand of that. Okay. There are two different Thank things. You. I just wanted to make a right. little illustration. Right. In the budget document, mm. the budget statement itself, mm. we're giving a ceiling of one hundred and forty-nine million dollars for the Ministry of Communications. Okay. At the committee, we realized that there was a mistake. Because IGF for the National Identification Authority had been placed within the Ministry of Communications, which made our, our, our ceiling 149. And so when we came to debate the estimates, we had agreed with finance that they had to move that back to Office of Government Machinery, okay. which would reduce our estimates by 2 million plus. So on the floor of Parliament, we had to amend it. Mm. So the estimates not and what ultimately all. ends up as being appropriated in mm. the Appropriations Bill okay. may be different from the budget statements right. presented by and, the and Finance this, Minister. This are right. And this is not a classic example of that. Right. There are thousands of examples. Okay. So, so uh, a lot of examples of that. That's okay. what Parliament is there. So, 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 wasn't being, so, so uh, the, wrong the, the, the NDC is getting mysterious. ready. Of course, the largest opposition party is getting ready to pick from how many who have filed so far is it six um they are nominating to be presidential candidates of the part on the ticket of the party and we eventually got to know that whilst the you know there was some amount of um disagreements in the processes leading up to all of this and the filing fees and all, on the very day when uh, they picked the nomination, they paid for the forms and it was sealed, they seem to have uh, comments, <coughs> reconciliatory comments. But right after they were done, then we heard of a court that had given a, an injunction interim that's granted for a limited period of 10 days. 
because still there are those who are aggrieved. Let's listen to uh, Alban Bagwin, Professor Joshua Alabi, and uh, John Mahama uh, at, after the, the process was closed. Let's listen to them and come back to the studio. But for us to win election 2020, we must first win the battle for the soul of our party. My brothers and sisters, for us to win election 2020, we must win election 2019 by electing Ask Bagwin in the primaries. We have a dire need as a party to beat a path back to our roots and to once again hold high the core values and principles that made the NDC the beacon of hope and the party of choice. I have to pay 300,000 Ghana City to present myself to lead this party. If we handle this party very well, I think in the near future, flat bearers will not have to pay for anything. So that a common man with good ideas can lead this party and lead this country to the right. I am afraid. I am afraid for our party. For those who supported the, the amount, there will be a time if we don't take care, we will be charging branch chairman 10,000 Ghana City to be chairman of the various branches. We have to work and find innovative methods to resource our party, innovative methods to rebuild our country, innovative methods to find employment for our, our team in youth. By the presentation of these nomination forms, and I know that the process will uh, uh, terminate when eventually we are vetted and accepted as official candidates of the party. I want to thank all my colleagues who have made this very competitive and to say that this is a friendly competition amongst members of the same party. And I want to promise you and pledge to you that I'll maintain the ethics of a very clean campaign. And I'm positive that at the end of the process, John Dramani Mahama will emerge as a candidate. I don't promise, I prove. I'm running because even though we did not succeed in 2016, I learned a great many lessons. But I commit myself to working closely with the structures of the party to explore innovative ways to resource the party while promoting transparency and accountability. I also pledge to commit myself to party discipline and to make the party supreme at all times. I offer my experience, my skill, my energy, and unyielding spirit on the campaign trail, my passion and vision to lead this party to a resounding victory in 2021. to a resounding victory in 2020, and to see an inauguration of a new NDC government on 7 January 2021. You're welcome back, and please don't forget that the party in the park has started at the Legon Botanical Gardens. Uh, get there and uh, have some fun. Now, Mona, it does appear, whilst they seem to give a bit of, you know, conciliatory messages, you can tell that the mudslinging is not over mm -hmm. yet. Mm. Yes. Something. Um, whenever there's competition, whether it's even among friends, there will be some mudslinging. <laughs> Because I think the natural thing is you, you, you want to win and you, you, you just do anything you can to win. You become obsessed with wanting to win. You have an agenda you but want you to But you have to be careful that. because you are empowering your opponents. That, that, is, that may be true, but um, in the context, you know. And I think you heard uh, Express President Mahama saying that this is a competition among 
friends. So a lot of this mud is not mud that stays, but mud that can be cleaned very easily. In fact, uh, I'm not too sure that um, it, it's about real mud. It's just about everyone saying, maybe we can do things differently. Let's look at how we can raise money for the party and so forth. I know you're talking about some things from the past. People have where, thrown real where, jabs. Where, where and now Guzitano says that he is <coughs> intimidated. He and his people are intimidated as they campaign. Yes, but, but this is natural. Look, even in secondary school, picking a senior prefect, even in elections for any treasurer, I mean, at any level, some of these things come up. But in the end, we come together. Okay. NDC has always been known to be able to galvanize, come back together and move forward. So I'm not too concerned about the mud that has been slung in the mm. past. It, it will fall away. Are you <coughs> surprised that in the end, those who were complaining even after the uh, filing fees were reduced, um, still were able to pick their forms? Actually, it was pay. interesting when I, I read earlier that uh, Honorable Spiel Gabra had said that he, he would claim to be disabled and pay the yeah. <laughs> disabled persons. <laughs> right. He ended up paying and adding another 5,000. That speaks to the spirit of the NDC that we just talked about. Even after the complaint, they'll still step up to the plate and do what has to be done. Mm. And it was nice to see him put the additional 5,000 towards it. Okay. It's all part of the game. Right. Um, Joyce, what do you say preliminary about the closure of this part of the, the process to electing a flag bearer? And then, because I see you have the constitution here, mm -hmm. a constitution I mm, have good. had to be yeah. reading quite a bit <laughs> in the last two weeks. Yeah. Um, the, the interim injunction that's been placed on the process, uh, what does that portend for it? Well, thank you very much, Samson. I actually had a conversation with the lawyers yesterday, and basically you know that this can be abridged and that it could even be dispensed of very quickly, even before the 10-day time limit. Okay. So that is a matter that is under control and will be dealt with. I think that is largely premised on certain misunderstandings about <coughs> the guidelines that have been issued, specifically the last portion, which speaks to having served for 10 years before you can file for a position as a flag bearer. Indeed, Mr. Guzitano has been known to complain about some acts of intimidation, what have you, but he has also come out with a disclaimer that he is not in any way involved in this uh, writ or this injunction for that this matter. This proxy is obvious. Exactly. Well, I would not want to speak to <laughs> issues that are not personally known to me. So that is another matter. And of course, it is already in court, so it's sub judice anyway. Let's leave the court to decide. But I believe it's a proxy. It's not, largely it's not, it's not, it's not a matter that <laughs> yes, puts anybody in contempt exactly. of the Exactly. I, I believe largely that this is a matter that will be <laughs> dispensed with very quickly. So mm -hmm. that is not a problem. But okay, so they, they got an interim injunction, yes, they which did. is for 10 for days. For 10 days, exactly. And what, what this means in law is that they went on the blind side, side of, of the, the party, party that exactly. they have sued. So the party has since been saved. Anyway. Okay. Yes. And then by the 10th day, yeah. they are supposed to repeat that application exactly. on Either notice. To extend it or exactly. Then the party will go and argue yes. why there's why no need to no extend need. Exactly. the injunction. Yes. So is that the path the party is going to take? Certainly. Or as you suggest, they are two, going to talk? Yes, they have two options. Okay. Uh -huh. So that is what the party what, is What's the option like? you are pursuing? The first one, as I said, would be to go and have it abridged. So they could actually dispense with this matter long before the they know exactly. Okay. The second one is that they could also engage whoever is suing, and then we take it from there. But all in all, right from 2012, the party has always issued guidelines in accordance with the party constitution. They are not in breach in any way of the party's 1992 constitution as being alleged. It is obvious whoever is suing, if you are taking the path of seeking to talk to them and to settle, all they would want is that the part of the guideline which says that exactly. you must have done 10 years yes, should be taken be. away so exactly. that Guzi will not be disqualified. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you see, as I've already indicated earlier that I don't want to personalize it. I believe the courts are there to adjudicate on any such issues. Okay. The constitution itself allows us as a party to have our constitution and to work within the tenets of that constitution. I believe on this occasion, the National Executive Council has issued guidelines regarding the flag bearership contest for the National Democratic Congress. Okay. There is an aggrieved party or parties that have decided to seek an interpretation from the courts. You cannot refuse them that right. And they are free <coughs> at any time so to do. 
what I believe will happen is that in the coming days, this is a matter that will be dispensed with very quickly. Okay. And the party would, as has already been indicated, undertake the exercise come January 2019. Okay. I have no doubt that this will happen. As I said, All right. there is a history of various guidelines having been issued in times past. We all know the rather, you know, <coughs> complex circumstances that have happened between Mr. Guzitano, the then Reform Party, and of course the National Democratic Congress. There's even some allegations that at some point even the Reform Party even went to support the then candidate of the New Patriotic Party. These are matters that are within the public and of public record. So we'll see how this matter goes. Okay. But I think that for now, the party has given an assurance that their lawyers would be tackling the matter, that in any case, the guidelines that have been issued would continue to be in place, and that eventually when this matter is because, of course, once there's an injunction, you know that it actually stays mm. all other activities right. leading up to the Congress in January. It could well be the it case also be that the case when of, exactly, the side of the party is heard by the judge. That the judge will find that, and as I okay. said, since 2012, these guidelines have been issued, all right. and we've had no issues right. or problems from any quarters. Okay. But there, there's a smooth process towards uh, November, uh, January certainly, 19? Certainly, because as you well know, seven candidates, including former President Mahama, have picked up nomination forms, and they've since filed communicating formally their intention to contest come January 27th. So I believe that that is already seven in five. place. Seven, yes. Seven, seven. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Seven have five. Yeah. All right. Um, it does appear a bit of an invidious position I may put you, but it's okay, isn't it? Uh, we have to talk about the issues. It does appear that most of the attention is on your candidates. You are a to the President Mahama. And the attacks, everybody else appears to be throwing the jabs at him. I, I don't know. How does he take that? Well, I am sure you know that former President Mahama has actually been in the trenches for a very long time. Contrary to people's assertions, he's actually a very astute and experienced politician. He has contested from the levels of rural right up to the highest office of the land. So he knows what is at stake. Mm. I also believe that when you look at the level of candidates, all of them who are vying to be flag bearer, he stands <coughs> for, he is the most experienced, and remember also that he has just come out of government. So naturally, everybody believes that this is the individual to beat. So certainly, there will be a lot of those salvos that will be coming largely at his person and, of course, at his uh, campaign. But I do know that former President Mahama remains focused. Mm. He has uh, addressed the public on many occasions. He is engaged with the grassroots. You know, sometimes we belabor what, what, the point. What? Long before former President Mahama even communicated his intention to contest, all the other candidates were all over campaigning and communicating their intentions to contest as flag bearers. Mm. But the main former President Mahama picked up the forms. <coughs> and all of the, exactly, him. absolutely. Okay. So, so, so very finally and quickly to and the debate. what does he mean when he was announcing his uh, comeback, so to speak? He he was like. I paraphrase, I'm born again, so give me a second chance. Uh, uh, his, his last words recently <laughs> was to say the same thing, that look, I've learned my lessons, trust me again, you know, I, I will not repeat my wrongs, so to speak. What, what, what's he talking about? In the history of political lexicon, or lingua franca, this is actually the least of all the ones we've heard. I'm sure you recall hearing now President Tanada Dankwa asking for them to try him again, asking that he has also suffered for a long time and should be given an opportunity. He promised and pledged to do a lot of things differently. So certainly, every time or each time you put yourself forth, you must give certain assurances. Okay. You must communicate a certain intention, either to continue where you left off, to do things differently, or that you have actually <coughs> learned some lessons since you've been out of office. And we have many of our members of parliament who have gone into parliament, lost the first time, gone back to contest the second or third time. And yes, they have been successful. Indeed, our current president himself contested three times and then finally won the last election. I think that our democracy is burgeoning, is beautiful, mm. is dynamic, 
our freedoms are actually enshrined in the 1992 constitution. I think that it is a great thing to see such humility coming from mm -hmm. the former president, to see him communicating clearly his intentions and reasons for wanting to lead the party again. Above all, he also needs to give an assurance not just to the National Democratic Congress and his membership, but of course to the good people of Ghana, because you need at least 50 plus one to win. So certainly you need Ghanaians for more walks of life. Remember also that we have many international observers who are also following events in Ghana. I think that our democracy has become a beacon of encouragement, of motivation, and indeed pride for most of uh, Africa, if not the world as large. I think it will be exciting once more to see two former foes go head to head again once more in 2020. I do think that come January 2016, I expect that former President Mahama will certainly be endorsed by the entire grassroots <coughs> and members of the party to once more okay. lead the NDC as his uh, flag bearer. Okay. So I look forward to that. And I do think that the engagement mm. was largely very successful. Yeah. I haven't heard a lot of uh, criticism from the responses he gave or the explanations he gave for wanting to put himself forth. Okay. I'm looking forward to a robust contest once more and look forward also to the National Democratic Congress mm. once more leading this country and forming a government. Okay. That's like it's becoming obvious that the, the NPP doesn't like the idea that John Mahama will be in the race. Really? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> now, for us in the MPP, I mean, I'm enjoying sitting on the sidelines watching them slug it out, seeing how the playing field is being skewed in favor of the preferred establishment candidate, John Mahama. And um, feeling a little sorry for the other candidates because it appears the outcome of this uh, particular election is already predetermined from the manner in which the filing fees were jacked up, taking a challenge for it to be reduced a little bit. Some not quite happy with it and still in court over it and all that. But what I find interesting is why anybody would think the N NPP would be afraid of the candidature of um, former president John Mahama, even when he had all the resources of the state at his disposal and did everything in his power to make it impossible for anyone to get a look in. We beat him by an unprecedented margin of over a million votes. <laughs> so I'm relishing the uh, idea of Nane Kufuado in power, not mm. as an oppos opposition MP. Uh, John Mahama uh, is saying that the people are beginning to behave like the, you know, um, the guys in England, they are regretting their decision to Brexit. get out of Brexit. It's very easy to say. And, <laughs> and so they are realizing that they were lied to. And so, oh, I'm yes. not so sure about that. I mean, th those people whose lives have been impacted positively by this administration are out there. They may not be the vocal majority who have access to microphones and, and social media and all that. But they have thumbs. They vote. They form the majority of the of a million plus who gave <coughs> the mandate to, to the, the NPP. And so I'm looking forward to um, our uh, president facing his former foe mm. again. And if he says we should try him again, uh, I, I, is he asking Ghanaians to go back to the days of Dumso, um, uh, our, our education where 250 thousand young people didn't find places in school every year, <coughs> health insurance on its knees, our economy in the doldrums, making us run to the IMF for policy credibility with homegrown solutions which failed woefully, and London is in a mess that this government has worked so hard to um, fix in a little under two years. I'm looking forward to putting our record in office against the eight years in office. But I'm also wondering, and to quote Asiye Dunketia, are these seven thieves, as against the 17 thieves that he um, alluded to when the MPP was having its primaries in 2008, <laughs> are these seven thieves? Because if you are asking them to pay 300,000 Ghana CDs as filing fees, where did they get the money from? 
now it is possible for people to support others' candidature and not because they have stolen the money to, to, to go and contest. And so if we want to pay him back in his own coin, then we would look at all these seven with very, very suspicious eyes as being ready or readying themselves to rob this nation again. And the disingenuous twist that he put on the filing fees of 400,000, claiming that the MPP had even higher filing fees, obviously um, dishonest and, and untrue. Mm. And, the, that, and I'm surprised that the journalist there didn't question him about it, but just sat and listened until our general secretary pointed it out that our filing fees were nowhere near that, but it was only 75,000. Right. And so if just a few short years after losing power, you are now struggling to conduct your primaries and you think that fleecing candidates to make them cough up and uh, enable you get the funding for your primaries when you didn't have any such concerns when you were in office, tells us a whole lot more than what he's saying. So in, in office, they were using state funds to conduct their primaries. Now they're no longer in <coughs> office. They need their candidates to pay outrageous sums of money to enable them to uh, do their primaries. We leave it to the Ghanaian people to judge because in office they could acquire a $20 okay. million dollar I property suspect, I suspect what you, just, what you just threw in will attract a whole press conference. <laughs> um, I, I'll, 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 and it's obvious uh, that this life is definitely not born again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very, very much always. so. <laughs> definitely not born again. <laughs> don't don't tell me that I'm backsliding. Please. Okay. Oh, you won't don't so, that. so I, I take a quick break. I return to hear uh, Kokubako on this matter. But Guzi Tano's um, communications director, uh, Nas Alidu sends me a message. He says, listening to you, you seem to suggest that Guzi <laughs> is complaining about the 10-year guideline, <laughs> and hence he must be behind the suit <laughs> against the party. Uh, that's my suspicion. It's a legitimate view I am entitled to hold. Uh, so let me say what you say to the contrary. You say Guzi has been a member of the uh, Anevon Court a branch of the NDC since 2007. He was part of both the 2008 and 2012 campaign teams, even in the forum of aspirants. Mm, that see. petition, the Council this of Elders, Guzi said. was not the candidate that brought up What's the 10-year guideline. Oh, I'll be happy if you could correct this impression. Thank you very much. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, so um, we're going down that route again. Got, Ghanaians are wiser. Uh, uh, we are back on the on the uh, on air and live on and in TV. So, um, Kuku, what do you say about the first of all how they have ended this uh, filing process and then what appears to be something that is intended to scuttle the or disturb the Primaries. Well, you know my views on this whole thing about uh, 400,000 being reduced to 300,000 mm. and they all coming on board. Last time I told you it was the same thing different. Mm. 400,000, 300,000, what's the difference? I, I knew this, those uh, gentlemen were capable of, uh, you know, mobilizing uh, the resources as part and parcel of the party at the end of the day. So I'm not surprised that some of them have gone to pick and even decided to give some, do some charity by giving 5,000 CDs. So that's okay. But uh, the court injunction, I haven't read anything. I haven't seen the injunction that was granted and things. It's somebody exercising their legitimate right. But I think they are a source of transient irritation for the party and the leadership. It's okay. These things happen in politics, you know, and it's a court of law. They haven't gone anywhere else. You know. That's all right. And when it comes to the aspirants who soon to be candidates, uh, is there a race? <laughs> I'm asking. I don't think there's a race. None of them <laughs> is more competitive than President Mahama. It's no contest. It's, it's, it will be a landslide if I look into the crystal ball. <laughs> I'll be surprised 
if President Mahama doesn't get more than 80 or 90 percent? I'd be surprised. I don't think there's a competition out there. Maybe some are doing it in advance in terms of future uh, calculations. But if you are being realistic based on the kind of party I see today and the hold that President Mahama has on that party, it is when and not if he wins. So all the other competitors, non-NDC, should just be preparing to uh, compete with John Mahama come election 2020. Yeah. I don't see him winning, though, in terms of the national elections. I don't see. I like him. I admire him. But I think he'll be defeated by the elections. Killed. You think he'll be defeated at the elections? Yes. But he's okay. a nice person. I like him. And mm. I'm not lying. And Malik is entitled to his opinion. Ah. Okay. Absolutely. It's just one. Of okay. course. Okay. That's the point. Apacans. Only one Ghanaian. It's what okay. no <laughs> so, so, oh, so, it's true. So I'm your only feeling one. is that he shouldn't be in the race at all? No, 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 no. No. Oh, I can't say anything like that. No. For us he's right. Uh, and he's competitive. Okay. Look, no, they shouldn't underestimate him. But I don't see him winning. But that's a personal view, as I said, one Ghanaian citizen, really. It's not a substitute for what the electorate will do. Oh. But I'm saying, I like him, he's a gentleman, he's a fine person, but he will lose the elections. Yeah, I see. There are those who say if elections were held today, you know, he'll Most give like a he a run for his money. Win. Who said so? We'll see. I, I said so. <laughs> you are one Ghanaian. You're entitled oh, to uh -huh. your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> and both of us have agreed he's a fine gentleman. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> no doubt about absolutely. that. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. We have the number one gentleman of oh, the land. Okay. okay. All right. So um, nice. I was Best hoping to see all. if I could read just a few of your messages before we close. Um, I've got about some two minutes. Uh, we're unable to deal with the other matters mm -hmm. that have come up uh, in the course of this week that we tabled for discussion because we've actually run out of time. And thanks for the messages as always that uh, commend the women uh, for the ladies here in the studio for how they have you know dealt with the matters but in you know what people are in detail on social media yes they say i'm alima equiaba <laughs> 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 there is a, a sense of humor uh, huh? perfect sense of humor right <laughs> right, right somebody right. says i've done a sex change or so <laughs> okay all right, so um, I'm sorry, I, 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 can't, I can't read any of those messages. I was trying to get to some of them and read. So uh, this is where we draw the curtains on this program. My guests have been Abdul Malik Kekouba, co-editor-in-chief of the New Crusading Guide newspaper. Mona Korte is former Deputy Minister of Finance. Esla Wusu Ekofu is MP Ablekumo West and Minister of Communications. Joyce Ba Mokhtari is lawyer and special aid to President Mahama. I'm Samson Ladi Ayenini. Uh, not as always, I like I always say, as always, my outfit is by Latida. No, this is not by <laughs> Latida. Uh, this is thanks to my my old boy, uh, Roxon Bukhari, who gave this to me. Thank you very much. Hands. Right. Uh, party in the park, the as hands. I told you earlier, I'm inviting you to party in the park. So join all of us get to the Legon Botanical Gardens. It's on. The news is up next. Thank you very much. Thank you.